196. I'm your host, Norman Senzo. Joining me today is Ro. Hello, all you happy people. Hey there, Ro. And also joining us is Sugar Dove. Hang on, I'm fishing, you'll have to wait. Okay then. And also joining us is Kyle. Oh, I feel like such a peacemaker. No one trying to declare war means civilization. Am I the only one here not playing games? I'm not. Yep. I'm scratching my beard. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would argue that's a game. <laughs> Is this has motion drills? <laughs> oh, have fun. That's the future of gaming. Uh, but anyway, uh, how are you guys doing? How are you all doing? Getting there slowly. Good for Saturday. I wrapped Kyle's Christmas present. That should make your day infinitely better because you know I've wrapped it. <laughs> yeah, we're drawing on something, right? You, I got the message from you saying that you're wrapping my Christmas present and could you get the address? And I went to check my phone because you mentioned the text message and I checked it and I'd also got a message from Alice asking the exact same thing. Kyle, what's your address? I've got a present and a card for you. And it's like, where did I get these good friends from? I don't remember this. Internet? No, we no, I know these people. We've been for 20 odd years and you're telling me that we've only just become friends? <laughs> Kyle, what are you not telling me? <laughs> no, I just, I keep, you know, the generosity continues to amaze me. So every time that something like this happens, it's like a renewal of fun, happy, fun times. Ro, give me some phrase I can use here. Grow a beard. Thank you. Happy beard, fun times. Okay, here's the thing, like, you guys are IRL friends, so that doesn't mean anything. Are you guys friends on Facebook? Yes. Okay, that means a lot. The We're only friends it. on Facebook because we run a group via Facebook. <laughs> Doesn't matter, friends in Facebook means best friends forever. <laughs> We've been friends from since what, primary... Pr- your primary one, my primary two? Yeah, it would have been... and I would have been five, you six? Yes. I was just checking the maths to make sure that worked. <laughs> yes. Well, I might have been five actually because I joined school when I was four and a half. Oh wow, that's smart. Yeah, they, I was in the, the yeah I was because my birthday is in a weird time of year and my nursery moves you up if you're born in a certain category. So <laughs> I, I might have been mean... five and a half when I joined school. <gasps> that fish is not a... touching my thing. <laughs> I think there's a way to work it out actually because school would have started in August. I'm born in December, so if you're born anywhere between that, it would February. work. Right? Okay, that doesn't oh. work. No, it's close. close I mean, just like. Quite. Not quite. But anyway, so um, the flow of this week's episode, how how should I explain it to the audience at home? It's slow, really, really slow. Um, no news this week. There's a few hits here and there, but nothing worthy to talk about or discuss. Uh, essentially, we don't want to say anything we don't know. So we're trying to avoid getting things wrong and being mistaken. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> You worded that in the most complicated way you possibly could. To try and induce as many mistakes as possible as well. Just like, <laughs> that was a tongue, that was a tongue twister. Like, if I had like a bottle of vodka or something, I had to try and say that, I would have been gone. Yeah, I ain't the best person with the talkie talkies now. <laughs> My mind's everywhere. But, uh, Norman, you, know, you need tea. <laughs> I had tea, seriously, I, I did have tea. No, no, oh no, not, not, not your low grade tea. We're talking great British tea, preferably with rich tea biscuits at the side or a hobnob, <laughs> depending on your choice. That will do you very well. Oh, you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> He's now going on eBay to try to see if he can find rich tea biscuits. Rich oh, yes. tea. Rich rich tea. Rich Let's well, see. Yeah. Nothing. I got nothing. But anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, a few things I need to address. Ro, uh, we got a listener who emailed us and he goes by the name of CRC Brony and he says that he likes your beard. Why, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is glorious. I know. <laughs> the, the same person again gave us a suggestion about inviting Sugar Duff back. Yay! I'm loved somewhere on the internet. <laughs> Yay! So you're back. Ooh. <laughs> did anyone ask for me back, or am I just here as they like did, the plus They did. They did ask for you back. Yeah. Uh, if you listen to episode number one ninety five, um, we read an email there. So yeah. Silverquill um, read it in his most amazing voice you've ever heard. <laughs> yep, yep. 
Right, I'm going on YouTube, I'm finding episode 195. <laughs> right, so the rest, for the rest of this episode, you won't hear anything from Kyle, because he'll be listening to the podcast. Oh god, no! This podcast is such a no! Oh no, I mean, if you want to give me a tag cap, I'll go right there. I don't remember, it's been it's so long. It's near the end, it's like the last five, ten minutes. Yeah. If you just tuned in to the ABS show, welcome to the Stroking Midnight Scribes Ego section. <laughs> Oh god. Well, believe me, I've been really careful when I edit your podcast to make sure that I leave every mention of your ego in there. <laughs> oh. And remove any reference to me, to me. So remove any like reference of myself, which is ridiculous. Oh wow. You, the amount of times you mention me, like you make me sound like I'm some sort of villain. I do all the hard work. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, to be fair, because of the fact that you're basically the silent part of the show, it, it's good to have a bit of fun with it. <laughs> Like, you guys will never hear her speak, and yet she does everything behind the scenes. Unless you're on this show. But you know what, talking about your show, why not, right? Let's talk about that one. Like, how is it doing? Uh, We're actually just about to do the last recording for season two. Oh. And we, I'm four, three, four episodes into editing now, so we'll be publishing in January. So, woohoo! That's cool, yeah. that's cool. What are you guys show about? Like, I, I know there's a lot of brony shows online, so what are your shows about? Well, our, I mean, our show is basically about celebrating the brony community in of itself and the people who are a part of it. Because, you know, when we started the show, or actually even before that, back when we were just fans of the show, and we sort of delved into the fandom, particularly Deanne, you know, because um, she has been she was in the fandom far more than I was at that point, and seeing all the great sort of artists, musicians, and yourself, Norman, and all bit of flattery there and only ever people who are around doing their thing and basically inspiring us to be part of the fandom and enjoying it give you know give us an idea that we should give something back in return for all the hard work other people have been putting in hmm okay so we interview all the lovely people and we say hey this is your chance to shine and we're going to show you up and make you look amazing and then kyle strokes his own ego and then Basically, I mean, the only reason I'm on the show is to provide ego-inducing comments to myself that other people can hear. And if they echo it, then that's even better, because I like that. (laughs) Okay. So, Kyle, tell us about yourself. What do you do, and what's this whole ego thing going on? (laughs) How did it all start? Oh, no worries. Well, what do I do in the show, or just in general? In general and the show. Let's start with in general. All right. Well, in general, I mean, you know, when I'm on the show, you know, I'm a crusading researcher and interviewer interviewing the best of the bronies and discovering what makes them tick. When I'm not doing that, I'm a cleaner and writer. (laughs) A cleaner? Could you please uh, elaborate? (laughs) Elaborate. I I take dirty things and I make them cleaner. That's. I think that's that's the general gist of a cleaner. I mean, Diane, you can uh, debate with me on that one. No, I just um, I meant, probably meant something else. All right. All right. And then, yeah, what do you do in general and in the show? <laughs> well, I am the queen of do it all and get it done right. <laughs> no, I, I work full time in a school uniform shop. I volunteer on and off with youth work. I have a full time life outside with my husband. And then when I'm not doing all that, I run the Highland Brony. So I have all the admin work and the editing and the guest inviting and all the background stuff that most people don't realise goes on. It's like when you run a convention, you don't realise how much work the staff put in. I'm I'm that go-to girl who does everything. Uh, I know how you feel. Yeah. what tells me that <laughs> all the time. I'm the one that usually answers the emails, I'm the one that usually edits the videos, and I edit the audio, and I coordinate the art team. And by the way, lovely artists. I would, Ro, you have to come on and do an art thing for us one of these days because it's so much fun we should do that we should commission Ro to do a background for one of your episodes that's what we should do that'd be fantastic i am always available for hire at delicious underscore art on my twitter <laughs> just drop me a note see just wow. plugging everyone right there how good are we wow. promoting artists ha <laughs> so what else can i ask because you guys you're are doing almost the same thing i am doing like uh if i'm not mistaken this is like a coup to take over the show <laughs> no no not at all i mean it, it would be very bad because you coup considering that you invited us on if we invited ourselves on that would be a better coup uh, it'd be great if like you were to start the episode going and we go this is the highland brony everybody takeover show. everybody dive <laughs> static noise and then suddenly we just get like some sort of 
propaganda broadcast with the Hale and Brownies going like <laughs> <laughs> we could still do it. No, I'm no. pretty sure I have the editing skills to do that. Yeah, that, that's on. Let, oh, let's yeah. do this. No, too much work. Too much work. <laughs> too much work. For us. No, that's too much work. <laughs> I spend most Bro. of the week doing audio at the moment. We... I had to be signed off work of all the times to be signed off work. It's like, oh. no, now I have no excuse not to edit the audio. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sudi Bell just only takes a few hours. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing the whole season at once, and then I have to get in touch with all the people to make sure they like it, and then I have to do make sure all the art team's got the art done on time, and then I have to edit all the videos again, and the videos take the longest because mm. I'm using the oldest imaginable software. What is it? Windows Media Player? Yep. Windows Media That's Player. a player. Don't you mean Windows Movie Maker? Movie yeah, Maker. Yeah, yeah, Windows yeah, Live Maker. Movie Maker. Live to be fair, <laughs> I do have a demo of, what's it called, the Premiere Pro. But it's a demo, and it's not going to let me do it without watermarks. So it's like, no. Oh, well, at least you did good work with Windows Movie Maker Live. Well, we are actually hoping to move on to new software because I've got a new PC off, hopefully coming soon. Because my poor laptop is on its last legs. I've got a dying fan. The battery doesn't work. About half the keys are sticky. <laughs> the router keeps conking out as well. We've had to reset it. So this is the longest I've been on the internet in about a week. But yeah, we're, we're online, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm guessing you guys are doing the show in terms of we call guests in, talk about what they do and stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's a very one-on-one <coughs> interview. Uh, because if I'm not mistaken, um, another brony friend of ours, um, um, yeah, Lucky Knight, he does the same format as you guys, right? Yeah, he was on our show as well. We were comparing how we how we run the shows in the different formats. So it was a very, it was great fun because he got to be interviewed by Kyle and I got to steal all of his editing tips. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So how, well, what's the difference? Because if I understand right, his way of doing stuff is he likes to keep it short within under half an hour or something like that? Well, his shows are over an hour long. Really? No, I thought it was half an hour. He tries, but he, he has like a two, like a three hour recording and then he edits it down from there from anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. And he cuts out every breath, every um, every ah, uh, every little noise that he doesn't like. He cuts so it's so concise. Whereas we record for 30 minutes, we cut it down so it's usually 15 to 30 minute episodes. And we do, like, we keep a lot of the natural noises in. Like when people have a pause for thought, we keep it in often because it just sounds more human. Oh, okay. Interesting, interesting. Very, very natural show. I mean, this, this show, the way it does things too, it's a bit different because, well, um, we have the news time and then we talk about the guests at the same time too. And then we kind of dump all the ums, ahs and errs and whatnot. It's like the, all those things we drop that one too. So maybe cleaner, much more streamlined, but it does sound human, I guess. I'm not sure. Well, from from listening to yours, yeah, and then being a part of it, I can tell that you cut a lot. <laughs> a you especially lot. have to cut a lot when we're nearby, because we're always full of it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. It's, it's the programming. <laughs> no, Sweetie Box does a good job, doesn't she? Yeah, too, too well, actually. Especially when James does his thing. <sighs> I'm being so mature. It's like here, recording a podcast. I'm, I'm playing Animal Crossing. So, <laughs> oh, listen, like you, you, you don't have anything to worry about. I'm playing Civilization Five right now. Wow, this yeah. show the best. <laughs> yeah. Professionalism. To, to be fair, I've been signed off work after an operation, and this uh, is going to be heading into two weeks of being off work. So I'm, I'm at the stage that I'm so stressed that I need something to wind down and Animal Crossing has been a lifesaver this last few weeks. <laughs> hey, so it's it edit cool? audio, play Animal Crossing. Edit audio, play Animal Crossing. Uh, it's cool, it's cool because uh, like Sweetie Bot does need her break time too and she does she does non-stop editing and then stops and then um, move on to the other one and yeah, if I'm not mistaken, this week she's got to edit four audios so yay. CC was got. I've got four to do. I'd be like, ha 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 ha. I wish I had four to do. The CD bots recording are always four recordings an hour long each, or maybe even longer. Yeah, this is why we record for thirty minutes because I have fifteen episodes is more than enough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you record in bunch then? 
we usually record one or two a week if we can. There's sometimes a few week gaps if the guests are struggling to coordinate because obviously we're in Scotland and a lot of our friends are in other parts of the world, so it's very hard to find a time. Like, what was the latest one we did, Kyle? What time of night was that? Oh, 2 a.m. in oh the morning. I was at yours. Day? No, it was on a Wednesday. I think it was a Wednesday. I, I think yeah, at that point, when it's week. two a.m., it kind of the day does not matter. There are no days. There are no. There's no concept of life. It's just. Uh, I think we it was can't just... even tell you who that guest is. It's our season finale for next year, and it is one of my favorite. Like, like I have very few favorites online, and he's one of my favorites. So it's a he. Silver Quill then. Um, no, no, but hey, seriously, hey. we have to get all three so... of you on at some point. That would be brilliant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I bet five bucks that's Anthony D. Anthony C is my favorite. We had him in season one. Yeah. Okay, get, never mind then. Get that right. Get that right. No, the lore. Because because when when Amy said Anthony said yes, I think I just about fell off the couch. <laughs> uh, right. we, should, we should try and get Larson on. That'll be fun. And from what he's I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. I would want to have Larson on the show, despite. <laughs> who he is, because I've seen so many interviews with Larson and it's just the same questions again and again. Kyle, unless you can come up with something really creative for me, I'm not inviting Larson. Yeah, I think the only way I would do something with Larson would be if we could come up with something deliberately fun and different from anything else that's being done. You have to remember that, Kyle, you and Larson might get along well because he's a writer and you're a writer. Just because we're writers doesn't mean... <laughs> Hey, I mean, you, you guys. You know, what you do, Kyle, is I you mean... ask him what he's working on, then you steal his ideas. <laughs> and I, no, no. I, well, the thing is, is that you know, if, I mean, just because you know a writer of another writer doesn't necessarily mean that it'll go silky smooth. I mean, I'm a podcaster, and Norman's a podcaster, and we hate each other, obviously. Oh yeah, we don't talk about Winnipeg. No, we never talk about Winnipeg. No one knows what's ta- going on with Winnipeg. Especially no. when Tyne Dag is around, we cannot actually mention it while he's there. Yeah. Actually, no, he doesn't mind. This is no, no, it's Jack. It's It's Jack Jack that hates it. Jack (laughs) hates it more than anyone else. Winnipeg is, um. No, we don't talk about it. This is the kind of quality you can expect when we don't have any news. (laughs) Oh, rubbish. This is high quality, fantastic stuff. Yes, fantastic, as in fun is very fantastic. You mean Thank F- you for that. <laughs> oh, you mean like F is for friends who do stuff together, U is for you and me. <laughs> <laughs> Ten points to whoever that. got that song. Norman is going to be featuring on a Tyne Dagger's new rap record, obviously. <laughs> uh, Tyne Dagger featuring the Sanzo. <laughs> oh god, no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we do, we do, uh, we do crazy stuff now and then. Most days. Mm-hmm. True that, true that. No, I mean, ever since you had me on, like, however many hundreds of episodes ago, I can't even remember what episode it was now. It must have been the summer. We've been recording non-stop since the summer. It was well before that. It was before Creative Vibes even happened. This was really? back when it was just High on Brony stuff. Yeah, it was before Creative Vibes happened. Because it was... I was at yours, Diane, mm. uh, and uh, this must have been about May. Like, about oh, April, May. Norman was like, I'm doing a podcast, and I'm like, hang on, Kyle is here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like, I just happened to be there, like, uh, seeing yourself and having a bit of fun. And it's like, Kyle, do you want to go on a podcast with me? Sure, fine, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the fact that happens, that's, yeah, we've been, I mean, we've been great friends ever since, Norman. Like, we true, game true. all the time. True, true, true. I just love that episode when you came on. It's like, okay, Kyle's on, like, who is this Kyle? Okay, like, how is he recording? With a uh, duct tape <laughs> mic stand. <laughs> <laughs> Which was to be fair, weird. we have two headsets in the house now, so it's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but still, it wasn't genius. Okay, it worked. <laughs> it worked. It worked. It worked. Dude, yeah, you gotta work on a budget. <laughs> exactly, and look, the, the, it worked. It worked extremely well. Considering that well. the microphone was designed for singing, not for podcasting, it did not a bad job. Yeah, true that. <laughs> But no, still. fishy, don't swim over there. I can't get you. <laughs> uh, but still, I, I just enjoyed that episode, just to be honest. Like, impromptu interview. Like, who's this guy? He's a fan. Okay, let's get him on. Okay, let's talk. Um, what does he do? Okay, let's interview him. <laughs> what? Out of nowhere. I know. Well, to be fair, it's you know, that's what I felt like. Because he works in a group. That's what it is. It's because we are the best fan club you've ever seen. Mm. We actually host events and stuff. We normally have a Christmas party, but because I'm out of work, I can't really have people around the house more than one or two people. Because I can't really do much if I can't walk around the house. So you're saying fan club. What was that? What, what fan club is that? 
Well, it's the Highland Bronies. Fan yeah. club. Like we we were we started as a group of like five or six friends that met up to watch episodes and have cookies and stuff. And then we started and... going out shopping, and then we publicised it on Facebook, and then there were heaps of us. And <laughs> now we've got a YouTube and <laughs> a show and all sorts of. I mean, it, it, it's insane how in the last year or so the group and what we've done has grown as much as it has. Because you know, last year, I mean, we were doing events and we were doing quite well, and you know, it was fantastic, and we were slowly building up the sort of the events we were having in town and whatnot, and then. The, the spring, it kind of just went on a completely different tangent that we didn't expect, uh, which is uh, which I'm still kind of recovering from because it's been a very fast year, you know. I mean, uh, how Brony's growing as it has done, doing creative vibes, Brony Scott, MBS, everything else it has been a monumental year, really, for us. I mean, there's I no doubt there. I think one of the big highlights for me is that now that I can, when my laptop working, I can now stream means that I can now join in with Mad Munchkin and do art streams. And then a lot of people are really like, you're friends with Mad Munchkin? And like, yeah, Amy's, Amy's a friend. Amy, poor Amy. I love Amy to pieces. She comes over to my house to get a break. And it's like, oh, Amy, I just want to make your day better. <laughs> oh, I know. It's... Well, Amy's so lovely. Like, she's, you know, she's, she's so sweet and she's so nice and lovely and she's great to, you know, meet in person and just have a good laugh with. Mm-hmm. True that, true that. She she is an awesome gal. Plus, I know she has well, her OC and Silver has beef. So yeah, I think they have. They always Mary have Sue. Yeah, Mary Sue and Silver they have beef. That means there's, there's a, a lot going on behind the scenes with that kind of stuff. I don't even know the whole story. It's like, what? Why are you fighting? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know. Eagles probably. I need to ask well, I think about it, that. From what I'm told, it wasn't. I don't think it was even Amy that wrote the joke. <laughs> I don't think it was. Oh, knowing Silver, he did it just because. That's quite a character design he's got going there. <laughs> oh, now I'm worried. He's self-destructive. He's going into a, a bad road. No, I need to bring him back to the good side. I do adore his show. It's just, it's really bad. Like whenever his, his thing pops up my YouTube, I'm like, oh, it's Silver Quill! Finally, a decent perspective! <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking about his show, have you seen his uh, Silver Quilt? I, I've, I've seen bits of it. I haven't been able to watch a whole episode because, you know, Rooter dying, but... Mm. <laughs> it's like, who made it? It's so cute! <laughs> I don't know, a fan. A fan made it and gave it to him. And he's been using that for, well, um kind of first impression episodes kind of deal I, I like it I think it's adorable oh, cool cool uh, I can't wait know. to start my show I can't need the new computer so I can start it I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, your new project is Deanne I mean can you tell us a little bit about what you might have planned I, I do believe this is Norman's show Kyle you might have to oh, ask go ahead, go ahead. Go, go ahead <laughs> oh listen like, we've already said we're going to take over it we might as well do it subtly <laughs> subtly just ask the question ask questions come back later <laughs> No, oh, it's, sorry, it's, um, the no, no, go. No, you, you by all means, you take over. You, you are the host guy. I do all the <laughs> behind the scenes. So I will edit out all of the terrible questions you ask me, and <laughs> okay, Norman right. can have a week off. So that <laughs> means Sweetie Bot's going to get this file? Cool. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, here, I do have a couple of questions for Sugar Dove. Um, just then, um, these are leftover questions from the Creative Vibes sessions. These are questions that I wanted to ask other guests, but I never had the opportunity to use. So they're not really applicable to yourself, but I figured I might as well ask them anyway. Uh, so, Sugar Dove, um, you've got your new shoe, shoe, uh, shoe, you've got a new shoe coming up. Can you tell us if it comes with a pair? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> nice try, Kyle. <laughs> the fact that I cannot even speak shows you how much editing has to go into Creative Vibes in order to actually produce one half decent shoe. <laughs> I, I'm I'm really worried about one of the upcoming episodes where we had rooter issues on all three members of the. <laughs> it's like, oh dear. Oh yeah, we did have a couple of episodes which we recorded for the new season where the internet just decided that it did not exist. It didn't want any of us to be connected, so I have three ten-minute recordings of like, I'm like, oh no. That is not fun. I I remember. Oh, I, I had a really terrible one. Oh. Uh, th- th- this was one way I had to talk to um, Everfree of West, and I would have thought they would have good internet. Surely, no, 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 no. Here's the thing: my laptop at the time was an Apple, and it decided <laughs> to... <laughs> you don't need to tell us anymore. <laughs> yeah, it decided to die. It decided to kill itself. Right there and then. Yeah, 
right there and then I, I couldn't restart it and whatnot. So I had to talk to the guy on my PC Skype and say, sorry, my laptop died. Could we reschedule then tomorrow? So he said yes. The next day, woke up, went, brought my laptop to the store and sent it for service. And at the same time, I bought myself a new mic, the one I'm using now, and never went back to the laptop. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sitting on a laptop and I'm about to go onto a PC oh, when it yeah. when it eventually gets done. Is there anything I'm missing for your show? Like any questions I'm leaving out? Kyle, Kyle apparently had questions for me. I have yet to hear a good one. Oh yeah. Oh no, I don't have. I, like I said, they weren't particularly great questions. It was more like you know, what should be your favorite type of cheese? What toothpaste do you use? Do you know uh, you've actually on a few shows said that you wish you could get me on to question me, and you haven't got any questions for me after all of that build up. And I obviously I've got questions, but I'm saying that for when we actually do a proper episode. I'm not going to waste. You are not going to get a proper episode with me on it. That's the whole point of me being an editor is you don't get me on your show. I want you on the final episode. You're getting me on the that one episode. Do you remember that one episode? The the one with the guest that was really shy. Oh yes. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, that one. Don't give me don't give me cryptic hints like that. I know who you're on about now. Yeah, one of the guests for season two who we cannot mention because of. Yeah. He's so sweet. <laughs> oh yeah, no, absolutely lovely, like lovely person. But uh, yeah, and uh, Diane was on that episode uh, as a kind of help balance out and make it a lot more relaxed and all the rest of it. Mm, okay, okay. You can still probably edit me out though. I'm that good. <laughs> no, no, don't edit yourself out. I want you there. It'll, it'll be like him talking to a ghost. That'll be quite funny. I am, I am the mysterious sugar dog. You will never know all about me. Or you could just insert R two D two sounds when you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Just chirping birds. That's what it's gonna be. Uh, talking about the Star Wars, right? Like, are you guys excited for the new movie? No. Really? No. Yes. No. What? I'm. I'm not to... a Star Wars fan. Oh, really? No. I've been burned for this so many times. Like, don't get me wrong. The movies are good. I don't mind watching them, but I'm not a fan. But you're not excited for the new one? like No, just... I'm not excited for the new one. Huh, okay. No, I mean, it's the equivalent of like me being excited for a new Iron Man movie. It's like, you know, oh, they're fine, you know, it's never wrong, but it's not a fan of it. You know, it's mm-hmm. just... Alright, alright. But, Sugar, are you excited for the new Doctor Who that's coming up? Oh, uh, no, and I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Moffat is ruining everything. I cannot bear to watch it because Moffat is so bad. You're not excited about the new Christmas thing that's going to be coming out soon? No, because Moffat ruins everything he touches and I can't stand it anymore. It's gone so far from the original ethos that it's not even Doctor Who anymore. <laughs> okay, wow. It makes me so... I've got a bunch of friends that are new to Doctor Who and every single one of them is like this Moffat character. His show running is terrible. And I'm like, I know. I've been a fan since Who for a few years now. Wow, I, I got no idea what to say. I think I'll watch it, believe me, show. it's the highlight of Christmas Day, but I'm so worried because Moffat ruins everything. I think that was his plan all along, to break to break our souls. Yeah, I don't think people realise that Moffat is actually the master. Oh, I God. think you're but right, he's, yes, I he's think you're right. He, he's the master, oh. yes. Plot twist, Moffat is the master. To be fair, Gassus is Lazarus, so... But anyway, anyway... If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themissionalgmail.com. You can also catch us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. And today, but we'll try and find things to retweet or replies to your tweets. That'll be cool. You can find me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And currently tickling my fancy are stuff that I got no idea. I'm tired right now. <laughs> Ro, what about you, man? <laughs> You can find me at Relicious underscore art on my Twitter or my DVNR, Relicious.DVNR.com or our gallery at ReliciousGalleries.tumblr.com. What about you, Sugarduff? You can find me on the internet. I mean, <laughs> between my live streaming at Picarto and my DVNR at Diva Genova, you'll probably find me doing a lot of work with Highland Bronies. So on the Facebook, the Twitters, the Tumblrs and the YouTubes, Highland Bronies or at Ronya Glass as our mascot is on Tumblr. All and right, everything else. Alright, you then. And Kyle? 
Well, you can find me at all the High on Brony sites that we have, but uh, my personal Facebook is at uh, facebook.com forward slash uh, Kyle McCall, and that's where I put loads of writers' updates, shows I'm on, various odds and ends, that's all there. And uh, I've also got a Tumblr, the One Midnight Scribe, where I occasionally repost and like particular posts about video games and Brony stuff and all sorts of interesting things. And cute puppies. And occasionally a cute puppy or two, actually. There are occasionally some nice cute things. Alrighty then. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLiveLive.com. Links are in the show notes. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm Relicious Rams of Delicious. I'm Sugar Dove of the Highland Bronies. I'm Kyle McCall, a.k.a. Midnight Scribe. And we'll catch you next week with another... Um, I want to say amazing, but I don't know. This episode has been not that amazing. Well, we have amazing guests, but I'm not amazing. I uh, see. <laughs> I don't know. Perhaps if you're really lucky, I might give you teasers to my show. <gasps> oh. Ooh. But anyway, bro, <laughs> take us out. And we'll see you on the next podcast. Bye-bye. See you guys later.